So today's lesson will be on uh, angles, parts of angles, how to name angles, and what angles are. So if we are given this diagram, this is representative of an angle. An angle is the figure formed by two rays that have the same endpoint. Okay, so notice how there are two rays. There are rays x, y, and rays x, z. These rays have the same endpoint, and an angle here is created. And we can measure an angle using a protractor. Okay, so the angle measure would be the, the degree measure between these two rays. Okay, so we have parts of an angle. We have the vertex. The vertex is that common point. So the vertex is the common point of the two rays. And the sides of an angle are the rays that create the angle. So the sides are ray xy and ray xz. And the angle is always measured in a degree, okay? And it's the degree, the angle is located in between those two rays. So how do we name an angle? There's a few different ways. Uh, but naming an angle, we use this notation. So we actually draw an angle symbol, all right? I like to draw an angle symbol with a little arc through it just to show that it's an angle and sometimes we, it may look like an L or a less than symbol. So I like to draw the arc through it, but I will say angle Y, X, Z. So to name an angle, we need, we need three points, okay? And we have the angle symbol and we have one point on one ray the vertex followed by one point on the other ray. So another way we can name it is Z, X, Y. And notice how the middle letter is always the vertex. So if I'm reading it, and if I'm reading Y, X, Z, I know, okay, I'm starting at Y, going to X, and then Z, so it must be talking about this angle here. Okay, so um, we can classify angles by their measure. So if we're looking at four of these, we see this angle here, okay? This angle in between, we can call this, it's a tiny angle, we call it acute. So an acute angle is an angle that's less than 90 degrees, but greater than zero. And then here, if we have an angle that's bigger, we call it obtuse. And this angle is greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. Okay. Then we have this angle. It's exactly 90 degrees, so we call it a right angle. And notice how we have this box here that indicates it's a 90 degree angle. Okay. And then the next one, notice how we have these two opposite rays, but this whole angle is 180 degrees, so we call this a straight angle. And that's exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so make sure you have all of those written down. Feel free to pause and write them down to make sure they're in your notes. Okay, so angles can also be congruent. 
So sometimes we may just be given the vertex of an angle, okay, like angle R and angle S. So if the measures of the angles are equal, then we could say that these angles are congruent. So if this angle is 30 degrees and angle S is angle also is 30 degrees, then we can say angle R is congruent to angle S. Okay. So sometimes they're only going to be given the vertex, and in this case we can call it angle R. But now if I wanted to say the measure of angle R equals 30 degrees, there's a new notation. We say M for the measure of angle R equals 30. And similarly, we could say the measure of angle S equals 30. So for the measure, we have to include the M in front of the angle. Okay. And so going back to this question, sorry I skipped over it, but marking congruence on an angle. So we use tick marks in the same way we marked congruence for a segment, but we don't have a segment here, we have an angle. So what we have to do is create an arc connecting the two rays and throw a single tick mark through that. So that indicates that these two angles are congruent. Okay, so angles that are adjacent. The word adjacent means next to. So adjacent angles are two angles that share a vertex and a side. Okay, they share a vertex and a side. So let's look at three examples. We have angle one and angle two. So sometimes we're not gonna be given any points, but we can denote what these angles are by label, labeling them with numbers. Okay, so this, is, this lesson is also just to get you used to seeing how angles can be represented in a few different ways and how we can label what angles are. So angle one and angle two, they share a vertex, okay? and they share this middle side. That's a middle side that they share. So we would say angle one and two are adjacent. Okay. For the middle one, here's our vertex. I got an angle here for angle two and an angle here for angle one, and we do have a common side. So angle one and two are also adjacent in that figure. But let's look at angle three and four. So if I drew angle three here, and I drew angle four there, they do have a common vertex, but do they share a side? No. So these are not adjacent. Angle three and angle four. Are not adjacent. Okay, so adjacent angles we have are um, next to each other. They share a side and they share a vertex. But this brings us to our angle addition postulate, similar to the segment addition postulate. Okay, so if I said that this angle measure was 20 and this angle measure was 50, we can say that the measure of this angle, CBQ, plus the measure of this angle, ABQ equals the bigger angle ABC. So if we have two smaller angles, we also have the bigger angle. So there are three angles in this figure. But here's how the angle addition postulate works. If point Q lies in the interior of this big angle ABC, okay, it's on the interior, meaning we have this ray splitting it up, Then we could say that the measure of angle QBC plus the measure of the angle QBA equals the measure of angle ABC. So if we're looking at these, we have adjacent angles. So I would like to also denote this as small angle plus small angle 
equals the larger angle. Okay, but keep in mind that if this was 20 and this was 50, you can say, okay, the small angle plus the small angle equals the big angle. So 20 plus 50 would equal 70. So let's do, after you write this down, you can pause to write uh, the angle addition postulate, also abbreviated as AAP, and um, we'll, we'll do one example to finish up this lesson. Okay, so we have this diagram. We know that the measure of angle ABC is 80, so that's the big angle. And the measure of angle ABQ is 4x plus 8, so I'm going to mark that. I'm going to write that in. And I know the angle QBC is 3x plus 2. So I know if I add these two angles, that will equal the big angle, angle ABC, which is 80. So we have to create an equation using the angle addition postulate, and then we can solve. So x equals 10.